I have another water filter I want to share with you today, but this one is a little different than anything that I've shared with you before. This time it is going to be the Aquamira pressurized water filtration system. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Aquamera for sending me this product so that I could share it with you. So when I spoke with Aquamera, I actually did not have this product in mind as far as something I wanted to test. I was interested in testing out their Frontier Max filter system, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. And in fact, that is a component of the complete system they sent to me. So what you see here is two systems in one. One is the pressure rise reservoir and the other component is the frontier max housing which can stand on its low on its own or be used with other systems so what i thought i would do is just take this apart show you each of the pieces separately put it all back together fill it up with some water and demonstrate how it works all right let's start with the obvious which is the reservoir it's, or itself or water bladder or whatever else you want to call it because this is what makes this system different from anything else i had even seen before what you have is a two liter water bladder now we'll say right now that there is a one and a half liter two liter and three liter sizes so you get to choose how big it is they sent, they sent me the two liter and what makes this different is that there is a wall running down the middle so in fact you have a double bladder bladder, double chambered bladder is probably the best way to say it. One chamber will hold water and the other chamber will hold air, pressurized air. And with that pressurized air, you're able to force the water out through the drinking holes, as I'll demonstrate in a minute. To one of the, a key component of this is the fact that this can be filled from the top very easily, wide open on the top. I really do like that. It's a lot like some of the other systems that I've reviewed that I've said I've liked so much. Very easy to reach into water, scoop it up, fill the bag up to the, to the amount you want. Also very easy to uh, clean afterwards because not only can you reach down inside and then have it stay open for drying purposes? You can actually turn this right inside out. Very, very tough material. We'll talk more about the bag in the middle or in a minute. The next component of the system is this locking system on top. So, in order to seal the water in, you would scissor this down over the top and snap it shut and that's it and it, it is a waterproof system absolutely very strong piece of equipment right here on top the next component of the system is the pressurization tube now the pressurization tube as well as the drinking and tube also have these universal connections so here is the make sure i've got the right right pressurization airport so that's on the back or the dark side of it and it would snap in here and it just snaps in and there's a quick release, release right here. So the universal design. And just like a, a blood pressure cuff, you would pump it up with your hand to fill the, air, the bladder up with, with water or with air. And then, then of course, is the next thing is the bite valve and drink tube. So it also has a universal connection on it. And that universal connection is going to snap in on this side. And there's no, no worries about confusing which side is which because it's written right on the bag which one you're going to put into which uh, side. One of the things I noted about this is this tube is quite heavy duty. It's all reinforced. It has a braided, appears to be a nylon case over the outside for wear protection and prevents it from kinking as well. The bite valve does have a dust or dirt cover over the end of it and it's a directional bite valve, meaning when it is in the forward direction like this, it locks off and then you turn it and that will unlock it so that you can bring the water out of it. Now, unlike most bladder systems, you don't have to suck on it or draw the water out. Once this is pressurized, you won't have to do that. In fact, just a slight touch of your teeth on either side of the bite valve and water squirts out. Or as you'll see, just by holding it with my fingers and squeezing, the water will squirt out quite forcefully, which is really cool. Now, there's one more component of this system. So you, if you had clean water, no, you know it to be clean, maybe you filled it up before you left your house and put this in your backpack for drinking from, and it is compatible with any backpack that has a water bladder holder in the center of the backpack, so you could use it, certainly use it this way. In fact, uh, I think it's ideal for, uh, you know, maybe even military systems or anywhere that you want to be able to have a pressurized system. You don't even have to have this in your backpack, of course. You can lay this anywhere, as I'm going to do for this demonstration, 
and use this to shoot the water out. And I do mean it does shoot quite a distance. I'll talk about the benefits of that in a few moments time. So the other component of this system that I haven't shown yet is the filter housing. So this is known as the Frontier Max filter housing. So as I mentioned, you could use the system without the filter if you knew you had clean water to start with. But once you're out of clean water and you're in the field and you have suspect water, then this may be the time to use your filter. And the filter just goes in line with the connection ports. So I take off my drink valve, my bite valve, and I'm going to put that in the universal connection on the end of the filter and now this is going to go on to the filter bag again universal connection and so now I have the filter in line with the pipe valve and the drink uh, drinking hose here and it's all ready to go now again I'll talk more about the filters in a few moments time because there are four different filters available from Aquamira that you can put in size of this housing. I have one of the more regular, um, I don't want to call it low-end filters, but each filter has a grade at which it will remove different uh, items from the uh, bacterial and right up to the viral and the chemical. So each one of them is a little bit different. So I have one of the entry-level ones, a uh, little less expensive. It will cover off all the organics that you're concerned about, but maybe not necessarily the chemicals. And again, I'll talk more about that in a moment. All right, so very simple system to put together, very simple components. I wasn't sure about this when I first got it, but let me fill this up and I'll demonstrate just how it works and why it's of some value to have the pressurized system. All right, just to save a moment or two, I attached the components back up so you can see the filter attached directly to the uh, output port of the bladder. And onto that, I have my tube and bite valve. On the reverse side, I have the pressurization um, module. And let's do exactly that. I pressurize the system. So it does take a bit of pumping to get this up to a good pressure. My experience so far is don't worry about over pressure. Uh, is you can this will take a lot of pressure and I don't know if I've mentioned this but it's certainly you'll hear me say it when it comes to the pros and the cons of this system one of the pros is is that this is guaranteed leak proof guaranteed leak proof lifetime warranty so I guess I might say don't be concerned about over pressure and uh, I was like as I say when I first started but I found that the more pressure you put in it there, there'll come a limit you just won't be able to put more in it and when that occurs then uh, yeah you want you want as much pressure as you reasonably can put into this so let's just start pumping this up so what's happening as I do this the bladder on the back is filling full of air and pushing in that direction against the water that's in the center. Now, it won't be easy for you to see the, the uh, divider that's running down the middle, but it is there. So again, I'll just keep pressurizing this. It can get very tight. I was starting to worry the first time I did this that I was going to get it too pressurized. But as I say, it's not really possible to do that. And if for some strange reason, it did start leaking from overpressure, Again, guaranteed for life. As you can see, that is now very hard. I'm just going to give it a few more. All right, that's quite hard. I think let's we'll try that. If I need to put more pressure in it, uh, I will. The other thing, of course, is that uh, you're going to have to repressurize it every so often when you, uh, as you use the water that's in it. All right, so in the bite valve now, I will demonstrate you can just squeeze this from either side. You can see it's locked off right now as I squeeze because it's pointed in the forward direction. But I can turn it in either direction, 90 degrees, and water squirts out. Yeah, I think I could probably get quite a bit more pressure in this and we'll see what happens then. Where the pressurization tube goes. So I'm just still pressurizing it. Now let's see what we have for pressure. 
how hard you squeeze will determine how much pressure or how much the water will flow. Let's turn it over the other way. So we got, there we go, that's a bit better. So you can see that the water's flowing. Now it's not flowing really fast. There, that's better. It's a matter of just squeezing it to the right amount to get the water to flow. Let me just put a little bit more pressure in it. All right, that's now shooting out about four feet. Which is pretty good. Okay, uh, now, let me just reposition the camera and we'll talk about the benefits of having a pressurized system like this. All right, let's talk about a few of the benefits of having a pressurized water filtration system like the one I have. By the way, it occurred to me, I have the filter attached to this system and that in fact slows the flow down. Of course it does. In fact, it should. If it's flowing very quickly, then you have to be questioning, is the filter actually doing its job? When I've connected it to, at home to clean water out of the tap uh, without the filter housing in the middle there uh, and then pressurized, it can shoot some jets of water quite a distance you know I'm thinking like five even six feet it comes out in a stream of two and of course you control that by how much you want to squeeze on the bite valve but what's the benefit why would you even want to consider a pressurized system like that well the number one that I think is most obvious is if you have ever used a bladder system in your backpack for uh, drinking water from while you're on the trail then you'll know that each time that you stop drinking from it it usually loses its prime in other words the water can slowly works its way back to the filter and in doing so then you have to draw again a few times before you get the water up from the filter now it's not a big problem but boy when you use this one the water is there it's right there the moment you bite on it the water is shooting into your mouth in fact you don't even have to suck on it to make this work you can stand back and have water shoot into your mouth now that's benefit number two you could share this with somebody else without worry about cross-contamination, sharing any germs that one of you may have. You can shoot water across to somebody else without having their mouth have to touch the bite valve. Maybe you won't be doing that, but it's nice to know that you could do that and relative safety. Um, what else with it? Okay, so some of the things that I have found it valuable for is uh, when I'm cooking here in the woods. Yeah, occasionally things hit the ground, right? Okay, so using this system, I can wash off everything quite well so that it, uh, you know, I have something clean going into my fry pan or my pot. Clean the little bit of dirt off. Rinsing the pots out afterwards. If you want to rinse your pots and pan out at streamside, I mean, that's fine. That's usually what I do. But you do have to realize that you may have left some contamination behind in the pots and pans. No big deal if you're putting it back over a heat source the next time you go to use it because any of the biologicals that may have been left behind are going to be uh, killed off the next time you put it over a heat source. However, if you rinse it off using a system like this, then you're actually directing clean water to rinse off your pot or pan and you're removing any contaminants that may have been there from washing them stream side. Uh, so I said, uh, cooking, cleaning off vegetables, those types of things. Wound irrigation. How about that? Wound irrigation. Now I have a known source of clean water without any bacteria in it or any of the uh, protozoa cryptosporidian that I can wash out a wound. It may be a scrape, maybe a good size cut, anything that needs to be cleaned out because of dirt in it, then this would make a good system for doing that. Actually, that's actually a big pro. How often you're going to use it? Probably, hopefully not very often, hopefully ever, but it's nice to note that you have that system there. Okay, that's just a few of the uses that I had thought about when uh, I was looking at this system Say, said, well, what are the pros and cons of having a system like that? Obviously, the, the pro is that you can use that pressurized water system for a number of things that uh, you can't if you don't have it. All right, are there any cons to this system? Yeah, there are a few. This does not work as a gravity system. I had kind of hoped I could take this and hang it in the tree, open the bite valve up, and just let it run the way uh, you, you would a regular gravity system. I can't make that work for a couple of reasons. One, the bite valve requires it to be squeezed and so that the water will flow out. And that's, that's there for an obvious reason, so you don't have water going everywhere when you don't want it to. I could remove the bite valve, but it's not intended to be removed, so I would only remove it if I had to replace it. 
Could I put another hose in there with a universal end on and that would work? Yeah, I have. And in fact, I tried that as part of this system. I took a hose with a universal connector from another system I had, connected it into the bottom of the filter to see if I could use it as a uh, uh, gravity dependent system. And again, the answer is still no. And let me show you the reason why. I think I can show you this. Here is the reason why. Can, this is the way it would sit in your backpack if you were using it pressurized like that. Can you see that the filter is pointed up and it's not at the bottom of the bag? Um, yeah, it, it, the system is just not going to work because regardless if I hook this up in what direction, the water is not going to flow with gravity, or it may, but only if the bag is very full and only down to that level. So you're not going to get all the water to flow. It's, it's just that simple. This bag is not intended to be used as a gravity system. However, you can use the filter on any other gravity system that has the universal connectors on it because this Frontier Max housing is really that versatile. You can change the filters out so that you have the housing is protecting the filter. It makes it, and I'll talk, well, let's just wait on that one for a second. I'll talk more about the filters in a moment. So yeah, I could not use this as a gravity fed system and that's a relative con. It wasn't designed for that, but again, you can use the filter on a gravity fed system. All right, I think what I'll do now, having shown you how the filter system itself works with the uh, pressurized bag, let's talk a little bit about the filters themselves. Okay, I took the Frontier Max filter housing system off of the pressurized bag so I could give you some close-ups of it and we can focus in on this and talk about it a bit more. So this is the plastic housing. It is what's known as the Frontier Max housing and inside is the removable filter, removable, replaceable, filter and this one is the backcountry plus and I know that because of the green on the top again I'll talk more about the different filters that are available but I just want to show you the general concept of this so you can see on the end of the filter here there is a rubber o-ring or silicone whatever the material is made of and that will go into the black end or this dark end of the filter housing and it'll actually stay in there of its own accord on the end of the rest of the housing, it's kind of like a bayonet mount. So you find it, push it, lock it in, and everything is locked into place. And of course, on either end, you have the universal connections that you can put in, again, as I mentioned, any system that uses that. And that's pretty much every system that I know of uses the universal connections like this. Okay, so let's just talk about the different filters that you can get with this. Now, I should say before I do that, you can buy the Frontier Max filter system without buying the pressurized water system as well. In fact, there are two different things that can be combined together, but this alone comes with its own system. And that system will include a few things. I've got my notes here. Obviously the filter housing, your filter of choice, and a bite valve and straw and an inline splice kit so that you can work this into any other bladder system you want, not necessarily the pressurized one. All right, let's just talk about the various filters that you can purchase uh, for a moment. So there are four filters, as I mentioned. The first one is known as the blue line and that would be identified by a blue top up here. It will remove things like PFOA, PFOS, lead, VOCs and heavy metals. I'm not sure what PFOA, PFOS is. Maybe I'll find that up and put it in the video description below. Lead, uh, volatile chemicals, and heavy metals. So you'll notice that this is not rated for removing things like bacteria, viruses, cryptosporidium, or the other protozoans as well. Just those things. It's kind of like your everyday drinking filter. You would uh, maybe use that instead of I don't know, a Brita filter at home or while you're in the field where you're not concerned about the other organic uh, type of contaminants. Then you have the back country, again, has a, a green line and that will remove bacteria, protozoa, cysts and microplastics, something that we should be more, con more concerned about. Then there is the Backcountry Plus, which is also has a green line, but in this case also has a charcoal lining. That's the reason I know this is not just the regular Backcountry. There is a, a charcoal lining inside of there that I can see visually. This will remove, again, bacteria, protozoa, cysts, microplastics and chemicals. So that's another step up. Then there's the last one, which is known as the Worldwide, which has a red line on it. And that one is rated for removing viruses, bacteria, protozoa, 
cysts, microplastics, chemicals, and is also uh, proven effective in reducing cyanotoxins. Wow. Okay, cyanotoxins I've talked about in other videos. That's a growing concern you have if you're in an area that has some industrial use, uh, besides the chemicals that could be there, a lot of the phosphates in the water can promote the growth of a certain algae you know, uh, that have, uh, uh, well, they refer to it as blue-green algae. When that blue-green algae dies off, it releases a chemical known as a cyanotoxin, and that is deadly. It actually can be deadly. Every year here in my home area of Halifax, Nova Scotia, in the spring or in the early summer, there's always reports of somebody took their dog to a local lake, one of the well-used lakes, and have the dog die the next day because they drank water from the lake as a result of those cyanotoxins. So people, the, the lakes are then closed, people can't go in swimming, the dogs can't go in swimming. Um, I have not found that here in the back country yet, but it's good to know that if you're in an area where that may occur, that the worldwide red line will remove everything, all concerns whatsoever. Now, I haven't talked about specifics in terms of how many log reduction to like the 99.999999 and that type of log reduction, because what I'll do is I'll give you access to all that in my video description rather than take up time talking about it now. But let's say at the very least it meets all the EPA requirements for filtration to make your water safe and in most cases exceeds them. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for each of the two systems. First, the pressurized filter system. What I like about it, what I think is a bit of a relative con. So right off the top, so easy to fill, as you saw, stream side there. Uh, I like that you can actually reach in and scoop as much water as you want without having to hold your whole hand underwater to get the bag filled up. Easy to seal and leak proof, absolutely leak proof. That scissor top thing works great at keeping it uh, sealed so you don't have any leaks. Um, what else do I like about it? Lifetime warranty. I mean, I was actually surprised, like I said, when I first pressurized it, I didn't get as much pressure in it as it really needed to perform at its true effectiveness. But then I stopped worrying about that because with a lifetime warranty against leaks, you really can't damage it as far as over pressure goes. I like the fact that it is so easy to clean. It's not only easy to reach inside, the fact that you can take it in and out. I don't think I mentioned, it's also dishwasher safe. So if you want to use your dishwasher to clean it, set it up properly inside to get the water in and out and that type of thing, use it that way. I haven't found that necessary. What I have done on occasion is I've used a little bit of chemical disinfectant to clean out the inside, and then pull it inside out so that I can make sure it's dry dry. Uh, yeah, so those are the things I really like about that system. Now, the one thing I'll say about it is I wish it could be used more effectively as an inline gravity flow system. Uh, at least I haven't yet figured how to do that effectively. And it's not the fact that I can't hang it up or can't let gravity do its work. It's just that the bag is not designed to allow the water to flow out of it. I had tried a few things like some splice kits where I could uh, splice into the output port that had another another input port at a right angle so that I could then put the filter in and have it below the bag. It still didn't work out all that well. But as I said, that's not a big deal because that's not what that bag is designed for. The fact that you can pressurize it and then squeeze the bike valve and get water to flow out of it with significant force. Now, I mean, it's not a shower, Although you could use it for cooling yourself off as you uh, go down the trail if you're really hot. You just, you know, spray yourself over, cool your face off, maybe clean yourself up a little bit. That's another use that I hadn't previously mentioned. Yeah, so when you consider what it's intended for, it does those things spot on perfectly. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Frontier Max housing system. I'm really quite excited about that. I'm excited by the fact that you can change out the filters. There is some maintenance every once in a while that talks about lubricating, and that's true of all the, all the connections points they a little bit of it's like a Vaseline type of thing they actually give you a tube of it to start but you know just a light Vaseline would do or petroleum jelly would do the same trick just make sure all the seals get a little coating on them every once in a while to keep them from drying out and keep them from to operating smoothly yeah so the housing is uh, so great in that you can replace the filters or change them out so if you have your red line top of the line one that removes absolutely everything and you want to reserve that for areas you know are more likely going to need it and on a maybe a regular day you just want to scoop up water from a, uh, a home faucet and use the blue line or one of the other two green line ones 
then you've got those options available to you. And that the housing has that inline system means it can be spliced into any other system that also has the universal connections. Now, is there any downside to that? Well, one of the things I've discovered is at least the way I have for all the components I have of it now is that I can't easily connect it to anything that would have the threaded pop bottle type tops on it such as the Canuck Vecto bags anything or, or maybe the Sawyer bags it would be nice to have a connection that would allow you to use it on those types of things or even a pop bottle so if if or when I say pop you know what I mean a soft drink bottle or uh, some type of a bottle maybe that's your preferred way of carrying water and you want to use that as your dirty water bottle and you want to be able to put this on there so that you can squeeze water through it you should be able to get a system that would allow you to connect it now I noticed that there are um, splice system and accessory systems available through Aquamira and maybe one of those are able to do that uh, I don't have those so I haven't been able to play with it to see if they will in fact do that. So I'm, I'm going to say that the filter is top of the line. In fact, I don't know if I mentioned this. It's made in the U.S. of A. So you know you're going to get a quality product that Aquamira stands behind. Of course, they are an American firm as well. Uh, I'm sure everybody's heard of Aquamira by now. They have been around for a long time. I've used the Frontier Pro uh, water the uh, style like the pen style one for some years and well, at least it's always been in my backpack I don't use it a lot because it's meant for directly drinking from systems you can hook it up to pop bottles or other bags but that's not what it's intended for it's intended for more just going stream side with the attachment hoses and drinking from and that's something else I want to mention I recommend that you go to the Aquamira website, and of course the links will be in the video description below, and take a look at their complete line of products, because in addition to the different filters and filter systems that they have available, they also have the Aquamira drops and tablets as well. So there's something you can use for chemical decontamination. And as you know, you can actually double up on all this stuff if you want to. If you're not sure that you're gonna trust the filter to do its job, you fill your filter bag up, with uh, suspect water, drop in your decontamination tablets and let them do the work, then run it through the filter. You further reduce any risk of any pathogens getting through by doing both together. It's kind of like a belt of suspenders. I don't feel the need for it, but in some areas I can see where people might want to do that just for that extra level of protection. Okay, what, as I mentioned earlier, all the specifications for the products, especially the filters, will be in the video description below. If you're interested, take a look at those. Uh, I'm very impressed with the filters. I'm very impressed with the pressurized system. Its use is somewhat limited to me, but I can see certainly putting that in a backpack that has a system where I can run the bite valve over my shoulder and draw from it as I hike. Uh, the links will be there for you to take a look at. And uh, if you have any questions or any comments regarding the Aquamira system, then please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.